Hello, my name is Knut Benedict and today I will again tell you something about wind impact on ships maneuvering motion. And again I will do that with using our Salmon planning tool, a wonderful fast time simulation software program for maneuverability. Today my spe specific topic is on core stability under wind. And I will show you and make clear that this core stability is highly depending on the wind encounter conditions between wind and ship. Okay, stability. Regions of core stable conditions under wind. This will be my focus today. And the question is, what will be unique? What will be new to be worth to be into your brain. First is, uh, this is for instance a ship which is heading against the wind and in all my samples today the wind is blowing from north. So this ship obviously is deviating from its course because it's unstable but one angle of rudder degree will be enough to bring it to another course. So in a unstable conditions there will be strange effects. Whereas this is a stable condition, I will show that, and um, in these conditions you can have really a big push by a wave or others and the ship always comes back to that course due to the restoring effect of the wind forces and moments. To introduce all these stories I will start with some very simple uh, samples of stability, a bow, a ball on a hill and uh, this will be made clear with my experimental lab facilities and uh, I will bring that together with something you already know about cargo stability or transverse cross stability to keep a ship upright by means of these uprighting lever graphs and, um, and surely enough I will use all the characteristic graphs which I had made before and demonstrated before on the wind impact on straight track and these are the rudder curves for windward turning or leeward turning ships and I will take that into account to demonstrate the ranges of stability and finally to get some strange effects like this that the ship is swinging into the wind and doing other strange things. So this will be the program <laughs> for today and I promise it will be big fun. Starting with the simple samples. Um, on the left side uh, I will always have the stable situation and on the right side the unstable ship simulation. And I will take an analog example of a ball on a hill or in a trough and uh, <laughs> I will use my lab facilities here. I rent this bowl from my wife so she was very generous to give it to me today and this should explain stability. If this lemon and this lemon I cho I've chosen because of the corona crisis because our life is so sour for the time being but it's fine enough to demonstrate stability. So we should be stable always in our life that some disturbances which brings us out of the status and this lemon always comes back to the stable position down in on the trough. Um, another situation is if this nah, ball, not this lemon, is on a, a slight hill, and I will take this Darjeeling first flush package to show you unstable conditions. So obviously, th this one is not very stable, so a small, um, I don't know, a small disturbance and the lemon is rolling from that hill and finds a way on 
either this side or on another side to in a stable condition. So this is a stable condition. And it reminds me on my father when my father was uh, lying on a laying on a couch on a, on a sofa and my mother was calling so uh, he was very stable with his uh, crosswords uh, nobody could bring him out of these conditions okay how to link this with transfer stability of ships and you all know this graph of the uprighting lever curve and you know the GM, it must be positive and must be having a certain value of 15 centimeters or so. Um, so this is positive initial stability. In case of positive stability, GM is positive. But we should also have in mind that normally we only talk about the right side um, of this graph and we don't talk about the left side because this is for listing the ship uh, <coughs> to starboard and this is to and this is to port but talking about stability so we expect that our ship in this condition always if there is a small wave or it's rolling is always coming back to an upright position if the ship has a certain uh, healing moment maybe shifting a cargo on deck then the ship is inclined, but what we expect is that the ship rolls around this situation and always comes back to this situation. The question is, are there unstable conditions also here? Yes, they are. Um, if the GM is negative, then we talk about negative initial stability. So this would mean this ship is uh, unstable for the upright condition. So remember this situation. So the ship is, so to say, on a hill and if there's a certain disturbance then the ship is rolling and staying on this or on the other side. So unstable range is this one. The ship will find the equilibrium with list. So this is the stable situation. What about this range of stability? We never talked about that. Uh, we are, how to say, feeling safe because it's still a positive uprighting moment bringing our ship back. But mm, I will discuss that later at the final end of this session. Okay, and this is the last, how to say, theoretical introduction because these are the curves, the graphs, uh, the characteristic diagrams for effect of wind for rudder and straight course. So it shows there are on one hand uh, graphs for ships which are always windward turning. So this is always windward turning. So we need rudder angles to the lee leeward side. These uh, graphs to remind, um, these are for ships which have the superstructure aft and maybe even with a bow trim. They are always windward turning. And we also learned that there are ships which in the first run, in headwind or quarterly wind, they turn out of the wind, they are leeward turning. And if you put the rudder to midships, then they remain at a certain, not list in this case, as in the cross stability, they remain in a certain course because on that axis we have the angle of wind encounter. Uh, preferably it should be the absolute wind encounter between wind and the ship. Yeah, all these curves, this is the right side of the di diagram and this is for wind encounters positive. But uh, so the wind is always on the port side. Uh, if we have wind on the starboard side, then we should extend the diagram to the other side the same way as I had shown it for the cargo stability. Okay, so this only to remember you should have a look into movies where I explain this graph. The question is what is stability under wind? And where are the encounter ranges for stable or unstable conditions for these graphs? 
in headwind, beam wind, or maybe in stern wind. You never know. To make a scientific explanation on that, um, it should be like that. A ship in a steady equilibrium condition on straight track. So this is always our initial situation. Stability can only be, be discussed in steady state condition, in equilibrium condition. Either on a straight track or it could be also under a certain motion. And if you apply a small disturbance, maybe by a push of a wave over, which brings the ship out of this initial condition, then the ship will change something because a force has been applied. And we call a ship stable if it comes back to the same absolute and counter angle to the wind. So this would mean if the ship has a certain initial course and the wind is constantly blowing from the same direction with the same speed, then the ship in a stable condition should come back on the same encounter angle to the wind, that means on a, on a track with the same course of the ground. The first I like to start with a sample for a ship which is always windward turning. So it always has, it tries to turn into the wind. And uh, if you put some rudder, so it finds some other course. Okay, this is a, a container ship and the condition is we have wind as for all examples we will use it. Wind from north with 30 knots of wind. This ship is a container ship. It has only one engine, one rudder, both thruster. We won't make use of that. And the, um, the rudder is put to 20 degree and these 20 degree prevents the ship from turning into the wind. So if I put that to zero, then you immediately see, okay, the ship is heading into the wind. And if you put some rudder, five degrees, it goes on a straight track, 10 degrees on another straight track, 15 degrees, and this is uh, our equilibrium exactly for 90 degree. And what I want to show is that a disturbance out of these equilibrium conditions will not change the course. For instance, if I'm using, so I change the course from 90 degree to 100 degree, enter. So what we see immediately is the ship first starts 100 degree, then the wind is bringing the ship back because the restoring moments of the wind brings the ship back and it will come back again to 90 degree course. The same happens if I'm using, for instance, instead of 90 degree, I'm using 80 degree. Uh, then the opposite occurs. First, the ship is heading into the wind, but because of the, uh, the uh, 20 degrees rudder angle, the ship uh, turns rudder angle to starboard from preventing the ship turning into the wind then the ship goes back. So it's a, it's a very stable equilibrium. And when I get back to the, eight, to the 90 degree, this was our initial situation. We could also um, try out some rudder angles, diff changes, some changes in the rudder angle. So if I change the rudder only a little, maybe by one degree, then we see it it's not changing the course very much. So it's, it's stable, it always goes back onto a straight track around these conditions. How about having an unstable condition? So what we see is that the, that the ship is going with about 23 degrees of rudder angle and it goes in this direction. Um, and I can tell you it is an unstable situation. I had already a hard time to find the equilibrium because when I change the heading here only by, uh, let's say, by a very small amount of uh, from, nine, from 140 to 139, 
then you see the effect. I will blow it a little bit more. So this will be the effect. This is an equilibrium condition, very close to it, but uh, it will, the ship will leave this equilibrium condition and finds another course. And I will show it to the other side. If uh, we increase the, the course, then we see, okay, for these 23 degrees, the ship will find a course of about 90 degrees. That's what we had before with our 20 degrees. Okay, we try it out. Uh, I'm going to the other side again. So uh, this is now uh, again rudder angle two zero degree and this is <laughs> one four zero round course and then we will see what happens finally. Uh, I move the time slider to the last position and then um, I add a maneuvering point then we see, ah, finally, if I keep this 223 degree of rudder and all the conditions remain the same, then the ship will finally go on only one course. For this, two, three degrees of rudder, we always end up on that course we had before. And I would like to explain this by using our graph here. So what we had, um, we had in the beginning, in a, on a course of about 90 degree, we changed the course a little for this rudder angle that keep constant. But for this course, for turning into the wind, because this means from 90 degree, we turn to 80 degree into the wind. But for 80 degree, uh, the rudder angle here is too high for this condition. So the ship will turn back to find the equilibrium. What happens if we have the equilibrium with course about 165? Uh, then we would be around here. And if we then change the course a little bit against the wind, what happens? the ship turns further into the wind and find this course. And if we turn out of the wind, like this year, to maybe 170 degree, then the ship comes back again to this position. Because for this ship, there is only one equilibrium. I will explain later. So what we see here, the... Um, ranges of stability is to be seen always if this graph has a positive slope then we have stable conditions. If we are in negative slope then the rudder or the wind doesn't bring the ship back to this situation it will turn until it arrives at a stable equilibrium. That's what we have seen in our, our graphs. Um, and for this um, uh, kind of graph, um, there's only an equilibrium possible for, um, for rudder angles to starboard side, for preventing the ship turning into the wind, it's only on that side, or only on the other side. So one rudder angle will only uh, be for one for one encounter angle to the wind. Now we will come to this graph for a ship which is having in some region a windward turning tendency but in other region a leeward turning tendency. Specifically for these uh, kinds of ships where the superstructure is more to the bow. Okay, if we have an, uh, apply um, a certain uh, disturbance here, moving the ship into the wind, so the angle, the encounter angle getting smaller, for this, the rudder angle which I have is too big, so the ship turns back. This is 
a stable condition, obviously, the same as we had for the other ship. But what happens here in this region? I will give you an example for this. So this is now a cruise ship. You see it has uh, two propellers, uh, two rudders, uh, a lot of bow thrusters and also stern thrusters, but we will only use the rudder here. The setup is the same, wind from north, 30 knots, and the ship is going with about 6.3 knots. Course of the ground is about 1 to 6 degree, and the rudder angle for this is 6, no 6 degree. So 6 degree prevents the ship from turning into the wind. So if I move it to zero, or then we see that the ship is turning into the wind, but it finds not a way turning exactly, heading against the wind, uh, because this is an equilibrium condition that the ship is moving with rudder midships, it's moving around 110 degree course of the ground. But we want to go with six, not, uh, with six degree here. Um, I'm using my tableau here, so six degree of rudder angle. And then we see, okay, this is our stable course, obviously, because if we change the, uh, if we change the course uh, substantially up to maybe 140 degree, 140, then we see first the ship is heading into this direction, but very fast the wind is stabilizing the ship, it comes back to the same initial course. The same would happen if I move it to the other side. So if I'm saying, for instance, I'm going with one, one, zero, zero, uh, then you see the ship is going first in this direction, but afterwards you see it finds its way and goes on a stable track for six degree of rudder. It's stable. Now we want to go for unstable condition. And I will take another one. So this is now the same cruise ship, but now heading into a direction of about 160, 165 degree. So this is the initial condition. Um, 165. And I can tell you it's an unstable situation. Why? Because I had a hard time to, to achieve this stable condition again. If I change the course initially to, let's say, this situation, then you see the ship is not remaining on this part, so it's changing. And if I move the ship to this situation and I set a maneuvering point, then we will see the ship arrives on a condition with about 127 or 126. So it's the same uh, equilibrium we had for the 6 degree of rudder before in stable condition. So the ship doesn't remain here, it goes to this side. If we go back uh, to our initial situation here and I change the, the disturbance to the other side, uh, let's say we start now with disturbance in this direction. So the course is changing now in this position. What happens if I go here uh, to this position? Then we see that the ship finally arrives on a course which is totally different to this part. So. That means this condition of heading about 165 uh, with stern wind with a rudder angle of 60 degrees is an unstable situation. The ship either turns to 1 to 7 degree or it finds another equilibrium which also fits into the 6 degree rudder angle. And I can tell you what situation it is. So we are discussing now what happens in this condition. 
So if we change the course into the wind a little bit, then the ship finds an equilibrium for the six degree of rudder angle here in this position. But if we move the ship to the other side here, then it doesn't come to this one, it turns over the 180 degrees yes. and finds an equilibrium now with wind from the uh, wind from the starboard side. Here we had wind from port side and now it finds the wind goes through 180 degree and finds an equilibrium with wind from the port side. So that does mean for this kind of graph uh, the slope of the curve again decides about the ranges of stability. With positive slope here it is always a stable condition. The ship uh, comes back to the equilibrium condition due to restoring effects of the wind. And in these conditions it's unstable here and also here. So this ship would not um, be stable heading against the wind. And to complete this graph so that we get an overall impression. So this for the uh, was for the uh, ship with totally windward tendency and the last part is the intermediate uh, part, uh, the immediate type of stability for the ship. So it's always windward turning but here in the bow region uh, it's having no slope. What does it mean? That for a range from here to there the ship can go for any of the um, encounter angles with rudder midships. So uh, there's a range of uh, possibilities for this ship. Oh my goodness! Hold on! Did you not notice there's a little mistake? I was watching you looking this movie and as a stability expert jumped out of my experimental bow to tell you that in this figure there is something not precise. At the green curve just above my head I think you can guess what I mean but if not make up your mind use your eyes and brains to find out and I will tell you at the final end of this movie so go ahead professor keep on going. This is now the sample for the container vessel heading against the wind. We know from the graph it's a stable situation. Uh, you see that the ship deviates a little bit from the course but this is due to the uh, pedal wheel effect of the propeller. So this ship needs about 1.4 degree rudder to go exactly against the wind because of the propeller effect. But what happens if in this condition 30 knots against the wind we change uh, the course? So if there's a certain push uh, to the ship, um, so we have 10 degree of, co of course deviation, the ship is pushed to this side, then the ship would move to the other side but again goes on a straight track against the wind. And the same would happen if we use it for the other side. What happens if I take another vessel? This is now the, uh, the cruise ship which has this green graph so the course against the wind is not a stable condition. We see that for a big while it, uh, it's uh, heading against the wind but only a small rudder change, maybe one degree, no, one tenth of a degree to starboard leads to this effect and one tenth to a degree to the other side goes to this effect. So the course against the wind is very unstable and it would immediately move out of this direction and find the stable equilibrium uh, for this ship for rudder angle zero. And a final sample will be for another cruise ship. This ship is a ship which is 
wind has windward turning tendency but uh, with a very strange effect if you move a little bit the the, the ship out of this uh, condition against the wind then the following happens i only move um, the heading a little bit out of the out of the zero degree situation and then you see the ship finds uh, it's, it's a stable condition heading against the wind, but is oscillating. So it's always swinging around the course. You don't have to move the rudder out of the way. Um, uh, it's, this is now one degree of course change. If you make the, the course change bigger, so you see the course is now going to starboard side. But due to this effect, the ship swings. To, the wind brings the ship back, and the ship starts swinging. If we do it to the other side, uh, then the then the, um, the motion would result uh, in a situation like that. So it flips, and that goes to the other side. So this is a very strange effect, and this occurs specifically if the ships are yaw unstable. So it, your stability is the stability of a ship, the inherent stability without wind, with any external effect. And I will make a special movie about that effect too. So now we are coming to an end to sum up everything what we have achieved. And the first was the question which I had at the very beginning. This range of our stabi cross stability or cargo stability part here uh, is that a stable or unstable condition? Um, so what we know now from our wind behavior of the vessel, we know this is a negative slope. This is a positive slope, they are stable, but this is a negative slope. So if the ship would, in this situation, maybe by, by means of a a healing lever, maybe cargo shifting overboard, uh, we could end up in this situation, equilibrium, or in this situation. This obviously is a stable condition, this is an unstable condition. Uh, this would mean if the ship turns a little bit against the healing angle, then it would end up here. But if there's a small push to push it into the other direction, then the ship would capsize. So the clear answer is no, uh, this is not a stable condition. Don't try it out. I warn you. So let's sum up and draw some conclusions from our samples <clears throat> on the effect of wind on ship steering stability. Um, we have been talking about the stability on straight tracks. Um, in steady state equilibrium conditions and we have seen that the wind uh, generates some restoring forces to bring the back ship back on straight track after certain disturbances. Sometimes yes, sometimes not. The type of the stability is so to say a directional stability related to the wind direction. So if a wind is blowing constant from one direction, then it's also a core stability. Um, the most important thing is we can analyze the regions of stability by use of these graphs for the required rudder angle, which is needed to keep the ship to balance the, uh, on a straight track, to keep the ship on a straight track under wind. And specifically, the slopes of the curves are important. So where we have negative slopes, like here or here, it's unstable. And where we have positive slope, it's stable. So it leads to the following conclusion about the different uh, regions. For beam wind, stability is always given for any type of ship. And it increases with high wind to ship speed, so you don't need to use the rudder for controlling the course quite often. For stern wind, all the ships are unstable. 
and for high wind to ship speed, uh, uh, strong rudder activities are needed to keep the ship uh, on a certain desired course. Normally the motion of the ship when it comes back to an equilibrium in stable or goes out of equilibrium and find a new one in unstable conditions, it's a non-periodic motion. So no oscillations occur if the ship is going uh, again to a, a course. And the last part is for the bow uh, uh, wind or quarterly wind, there the stability can be different because you see also the slopes are different here. Some ships are stable, specifically when they have this slope in this graph. So that means specifically um, ships uh, with windward turning tendency are stable. Um, some ships are unstable, specifically those with uh, leeward uh, turning tendency. And there's a special case for headwind. Um, there might be oscillation if a ship tends to be yaw unstable. So the steering stability without wind comes into place specifically for headwind conditions. Okay, so let's draw another conclusion talking about the analogies um, of these graphs we have seen for wind stability with loading and also your stability to compare it. We have seen the graphs for the loading stability and we have seen the graphs for unstable behavior. This is for stable behavior positive slopes and here we have negative slopes for unstable behavior in, uh, in upright conditions. And these were the graphs for the wind stability. So you can draw some conclusions for the stable conditions with uh, positive slope and where we have negative slopes like here it's compared to these unstable. Um, we might have to take into consideration this is for wind um, with the, uh, for ships with the wind from port side. Uh, if we want to have wind from the starboard side, so we have to flip the diagrams in this direction and then we have the same uh, graphs for the stable condition like here and for the unstable condition in this region. So it can be easily compared. And for your stability, some of you might know the so-called spiral test, where you put some rudder and read the final rate of turn. So here normally is the rudder axis and this is the rate of turn. And we have uh, stable ships like this or unstable ships like this. It looks a, bit, a little bit different to the stability graph, but if you again flip this graph two times, then you got the following situation. Okay, now it's looking the same like here. This is a stable ship where, for instance, for rudder angle zero, the ship goes straight. And this is an unstable ship where the rudder angle, which is now on this axis, if you put rudder amidship, then it can um, lead to either turning to one direction or to the other direction. So several options are possible. It's unstable condition. Rudder midship is an unstable condition. Apropos analogies uh, for stability, um, there might be an analogies also in other areas. And uh, an important topic is now the corona pandemic, uh, so you might see our immune system also as a stability system. Hopefully it's stable, so if some virus attacks from outside, it always come back to stable situation. And please, not in this situation that we have uh, the corona virus, which uh, makes our system unstable, so it rolls that it might end up in a 
grave on the cemetery. No, no, we hope that it will be to the good and we get a stable system. Um, and this was only our body, but if you talk about the community, also we need some stability against any other, how to say, uh, measures due to the uh, fight against the pandemic, but also to others, like uh, this commercial, fight against commercial interest, or fight against uh, um, colorful ideologies, or aggressive uh, religions, or we stand in a stable manner against any other false promises. Finally, our planet Earth, with its climate, uh, seems to be a very stable system. Uh, it successfully survived um, ice, age, ice ages, warm periods, volcano eruptions, and even the impact of uh, asteroids. And I'm sure it will also overcome us as a human population, as part of the nature, um, we should use our brains uh, to make a deal with the Earth. Okay guys, I'm back again now to tell you the truth why this slide was obviously wrong. And we are talking about this point here. Could that be the condition where the ship is heading for after getting a disturbance in these unstable conditions. Could it be stopping here? No. Because this is a negative slope, so it is an unstable condition. So how should it look like? Like this. So the ship can only be stopped here. However, there's another thing to discuss. When the ship starts turning here, the ship is turning with the stern through the wind, 180 degree, and then it turns further. So it goes this, 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 and seeks an equilibrium, a stable one for this rudder angle. And this could only be on this side. So this is the stable condition, and it's the way how it goes that the ship turns with the stern through the wind and arrives finally here. So, uh, we learned something new. You were excellent students. Take care. <laughs>